Hello and welcome back to Reading with Mo. Today we are going to be talking about all the books that I read so far this year that I haven't had a chance to review for you guys yet. So those will be the books that I finished in the months of February and March and then we'll be all caught up which will be great and <laughs> we can be back on track with our regularly, regularly scheduled programming. So uh, I'll go ahead and talk about each month on its own. And I'm thinking within each month, I'll go ahead and start off with what I enjoyed the best, working my way down to what I enjoyed the least. So we'll go ahead and start with February. In the month of February, I finished 11 books. I had no DNFs for the month, so that was pretty great. I had a really good reading month as far as quantity. I, so far this year, have not had as many five stars as I would like. Uh, actually, I've only had one, and the only one I've had so far has been in the month of February. So we'll go ahead and start off on a high note. We'll start with the best book I've probably read so far this year, and that would be Poor Dear. The, this is a book by Claire Oshetsky. I don't think it's her debut. I think there is one other book that Claire has written. This book is a 2024 release. It just came out this month, or <laughs> it came out this year. And it's the category I would put this in is contemporary literary fiction, a bit of magical realism. I listened to this book as an audiobook from my library. Finally, I feel like I've been waiting so long for a book to hit me like this while I'm reading it, where I can just like feel myself falling in love with it as I'm reading. I love the writing, the characters, the plot, all of it was like chef's kiss to me. Our main character, she's sitting down to scribble out this story for us. So the story starts out when she's four years old and unintentionally the reason why her friend dies. The rest of her life, this really affects how she views herself and the grief and burden of this, it really manis manifests itself figuratively as this physical deer that she's carrying around on her back or just like carrying around with her every day. It's really hard for her to make sense of what happened at that time because of her age and the fact that her mom insists that she wasn't even playing with her friend that day so that it's not even her fault. The intention of the book that she's writing and telling us is to get the true story out. Our main character, whose name is Margaret, as a child, as she's growing up, she's a very quiet child. We are observing like the dynamics between her and her mother and her peers and those around her. This is a book I would definitely love to reread and I want to buy a physical copy of it. I don't own it yet. There's more I could say, but I just don't want to tell you guys like the whole story and spoil everything. Like I mentioned, I listened to this on audiobook and my only complaint is that I wish it was longer. The audiobook is only six hours, which is pretty short, especially if you listen to it sped up a little bit. But at the same time, I think it's also like a perfect length for this book. If it had been a little bit longer, I may not have enjoyed it as much, but I feel like it was very concise with its storytelling. So then on to my four star reads. We have four for the month of April. We'll go ahead and start with the first one, which is One of the Good Guys by Araminta Hall. This book is a mystery thriller and I listened to this one on audiobook. This is another 2024 release, which is going to be a very common theme. I did a lot of 2024 audiobooks in February, so that is going to make up the majority of the books I read in February. We start off with our main character, Cole, and he's fresh out of his marriage, and he's starting over in from London. He's moved to the coast. Then his neighbor, Lenora, she has moved to the same area and is looking for a fresh start as well. As they're becoming friends, we aren't really sure why Cole's marriage hasn't worked out. It really seems like he portrays himself as such a good guy, is so different than the stereotypical male. At the same time that all this is happening, there's this uh, couple like female activists who are hiking along the coast there and they're raising awareness for a cause and they go missing and then both of our other main characters are becoming involved in the investigation. The first part of the book I kind of just kept waiting for the shoe to drop because Cole reads as this like too good to be perfect guy and that's never really realistic in a marriage. I enjoyed the book for its mystery parts um, but even more so for all the topics, topics that it touches on that are kind of centered around women's issues. This is a psychological thriller and it definitely kept my attention. The audiobook was great. I enjoyed the multimedia aspect of it. I would definitely recommend to listen to this one if it's a book that sounds interesting to you. It makes you feel like you're kind of like an observer at, to the whole situation live as it's going on. And I'll be looking forward to whatever this author releases next. I don't know if this is a book that necessarily a lot of people will like just because of the, uh, I feel like people taking will take issue with all of 
the um, like feminine topics that I touched on with this book, but for me, I personally enjoyed it. Next, we have Sugar Baby by Celine St. Clair. I read this book as an ebook I checked out from my library. The genre this falls into would be contemporary literary fiction, and it's also another 2024 release. Our main character, her name is Agnes. She's 21 years old, and she's grown up in this ultra conservative conservative religious household her mom is like a single parent and she's also grown up with her sister she works as a cleaner to make money and through that she the daughter of one of her employers kind of like takes her under her wing as she's writing a book to basically become a sugar baby and she wants to test out all of her like experiments and hypotheses on Agnes. This leads her into a world that's like completely unknown to her before, where eventually she gets kicked out from her home and has to move in with Emily and the rest of her roommates slash also sugar babies. The money seems very easy and great at first, but it's definitely a slippery slope and she's conflicted by the beliefs that were instilled in her um, from her childhood and also just she's having like a lot of mental traumas. Her journey into becoming an escort was interesting, but definitely tough to read. It was not an easy read. Literally the whole time I was reading it, I was just like, wow, this woman is going to need so much therapy after this. This book definitely touches on a lot of adult topics and a lot of things that could be triggering. So I would say look up trigger warnings before if that's something that you feel like you need. I really liked Celine's writing and overall the subject isn't something I've really read about before so I found it interesting and I would definitely pick up any other books that this author goes on to publish. I don't really I don't remember now if this one was her debut or not. And then we have No Reservations by Cheryl Lister. I gave this one four stars. I listened to this on audiobook. This uh, genre that this book would fall into I would say would be like contemporary fiction. We're following a friend group of four women who have been friends, really close friends for all their lives, or if not all of it, like a good chunk or majority of their life. The three of them really are forced to really be there for each other and come together with tough life circumstances when one of the friends, Yvette, dies from cancer. Uh, as a parting gift, she, Yvette, gifts her friends this all-inclusive trip to Jamaica for them after she passes away. But at the beginning of the novel, this is when this has happened, so um, the trip has been booked for months later. Leading up to this trip, each of the women is dealing with difficult problems in their lives. One of them feels like she has put all of her life's dreams on hold to help her husband achieve his dreams. And now that he's where he needs to be, she doesn't feel like she's receiving like mutual support back when it comes to her uh, fulfilling her life's dreams. One of them is dealing with infertility issues with her husband. And one of them is a single mother who, because of an abusive marriage that she was in before is having a hard time opening up to love or being open to dating again. I feel like I can't be super impartial to this book for two reasons. One, it takes place in Sacramento, so it was really cool being able to see different places I'm familiar with being featured in books. I'm always looking for books that are set in around Sacramento. I think I've only read maybe one before that kind of had some Sacramento places in it so I think that was really cool and then the other reason why I can't be fully impartial to this is because one of our characters she's involved with someone and his name is Warren and he's so great and <laughs> the fact that he is has the same name as my boyfriend and he's also great like it just made me not made it for I can't be impartial to this book so I really enjoyed it um it's not a perfect book uh but I just really love that the stories and characters were very interesting so far. Like, I really love the book. It's not one of my favorite books of all time. I don't see myself re probably rereading this book, but I am really glad that I picked this book up, especially with the whole Sacramento thing, because I didn't know that going into it. I'm really sad that I missed a local author event at one of the bookstores in my city where she was doing signings acts. I think it would have been really cool to support her and the bookstore and to go get a book signed by her. Lastly, for the four star reads, we have The Heiress by Rachel Hawkins, another 2024 release. This book falls in the category of mystery thriller. I have read a couple other books by this author before that I enjoyed. They were uh, Reckless Girls and The Villa. I feel like this author really puts out mystery thrillers that are very easy to read. They keep my attention. Um, I can listen to the audiobook within a, a day or two. And yeah, I just really enjoy them. They're not anything 
like over the top or crazy, but I like, I like them. <laughs> this book is told in three different perspectives. So we have a married couple, their names are Camden and Jules, and so we each are getting their perspective as well as there's this collection of letters that are left by Camden's adopted mother Ruby that we are also reading and those parts kind of read a little bit more kind of like historical fiction. With Ruby's parts I found her is very interesting. She has been married four different times and all of her husbands have conveniently passed away and so those were very interesting. The story starts out with our main couple uh, Camden he has inherited Ashby house which is this house that his adoptive mother owned and him and his wife are coming back to I don't even remember now exactly like he either hear the will or take it over or whatever figure something out it seems like every character has something that they're hiding that we're not aware of and then when it comes to Ruby's storyline we're like did she, did she actually kill her husbands or was this just like really bad luck or whatever so yeah it was entertaining nothing like crazy good but i enjoyed it now on to our three star reads so i had one two three four i had four books that i gave a three star reading to in the month of february the first three star reading we'll talk about is where you end by abbott collar this i listened to on an audiobook it was a 2024 mystery thriller release this is the author's fiction debut previously they've just re written non-fiction books so this book is supposedly so, supposed to be like based in, or inspired by true events. I don't know what those true events are, but we're following a set of twins, Kat and Jude, and they're both 22, they're 22 years old. Kat has just woken up from a coma. She was in a car accident in the beginning of the novel and she wakes up and has no memories from the past except her name and her sister. We get dual timelines of flashbacks to their childhood, essentially growing up in this experimental cult. And also present day Kat is trying to remember uh, who she is and she believes her sister is helping her fill in her memories but she's not for sure. Overall I thought this book was just okay. I kept reading for the ending but I found myself tuning out a little bit at times. It's a little bit slow for me and I can't exactly put my finger on what specifically anything the book did wrong. I just really wasn't invested and after the first 20% I found myself a little bit bored at times and not super invested in what happens with either of the twins. Next up we have The Night of the Storm by Nishida Parekh which is another 2024 release. This is another mystery thriller audiobook I listened to and this was the author's debut. The, this book falls in the trope of the locked room thriller. It's featuring a multi-generational Indian American family uh, during Hurricane Harvey which happened in Houston. Our main character, her name is Gia and her with her 12 year old son Ishan are waiting out the storm with Gia's sister and their family in this big old house. Uh, from dealing with the fallout from Gia's divorce, unwanted advances from her brother-in-law, and difficult extended family members, Gia is already kind of being put through the ringer and then the hurricane happens just like on top of all this stuff. Everyone kind of being in one place at one point at that night kind of brings things to a boiling point. While I don't feel like this book did anything inherently wrong, I wasn't really blown away by the book. It was entertaining enough to finish but I struggle now to even remember the ending so that's a really strong sign that the book just didn't leave a strong impression on me. I feel like this is your middle of the road lock thriller mystery. I think it's probably more engaging and entertaining if you haven't really read too many of these types of books before. Next up we have Everyone on This Chain is a Suspect by Benjamin Stevenson, another 2024 audiobook for me in the mystery thriller genre. I decided to give this book a shot even though I wasn't really crazy about the first book in this uh, Ernest Cunningham series. The first book was called Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone. I won't be picking up the third installment in this series, which the third one comes out in October. It's called Everyone This Christmas Has a Secret. Once again, we're following our main character, Ernest, and this time in a locked train, Agatha Christie inspired take um, that features a crime writing festival that's taking place on a train. So there's a whole bunch of writers uh, that are on board for this. I feel like if you really enjoyed the first book that you will enjoy this one. It has a very similar humor and writing style, uh, especially with the author kind of breaking the fourth wall. It's very meta. Unfortunately, I just don't really find that very enjoyable. I found my mind wandering way too much while I was reading this book to stay very invested in where the story was going and kind of caring how it ended. 
Lastly, for the three star reads, we have The Word is Murder by Anthony Horowitz. This book came out back in 2018. It's a mystery thriller that I read a physical copy of that I own on my shelf. I also went back and forth with this one. I did the physical book and I would do the audiobook as well. This is the first book in a series called the Hawthorne Horowitz series. Um, I believe there's five books out currently. This book starts off with a really interesting premise. So we're following this woman who is murdered right after, like literally the same day that she goes and makes plans for her own funeral. So right from the beginning, this book really hooked me in. There's lots of twists and turns, and this reads definitely a lot like a classic crime novel. Investigator Hawthorne, he's trying to crack this case, and he's using Horowitz, who is a writer, to be a ghost writer, basically, and document his investigating different cases. They form this weird partnership. They're personalities are definitely not very compatible, but it works for the two of them. I appreciated this book mainly because of the experience I had buying this book. So uh, I purchased it at the Battery Park, which is a bookstore in Asheville, North Carolina. It's a book exchange and champagne bar. And when we were there, I was with my boyfriend. Uh, we each picked out a book for each other. And this is the one that he chose for me. And I ended up just choosing the second book in the series for him. I don't know if he's actually going to really read it. He's not as much of a reader as me, but um, I really enjoyed that. So that's kind of what added some enjoyment to this book for me and what kind of compelled me to pick this up right away because I bought this book not too long ago. If not for this experience, it's not exactly a book I probably would have picked up on my own. Uh, the characters were okay. I didn't particularly care for either of them and I really would need to in order to continue on with the series. Um, I'm not going to be continuing on with the series, but I feel like the book wrapped up in an um, interesting enough and satisfying way, so I gave this book a three-star read. Lastly, we have our, the two star reads, and unfortunately, I did read two books that I gave a two star rating to in February. The first one is called Termish by Sven Hold. It's a book in translation translated by Sylvia Clayton. I read this as an ebook checked out from my library. It was a 2024 like reissue, I believe. So it's a science fiction dystopian novella and it's being republished. It was originally published in the 70s. In this very short novella, not really much happens. We're dropped into the story of our main character and we're able to piece together that he's staying at this hotel, expensive hotel. And it's after some sort of event that happened in the world that caused a lot of radiation fallout. This hotel, it's very exclusive. And occasionally, besides occasionally having to go down into the bunker um, when the radiation levels are high, it means the guests kind of gives them the feeling of, like they're living before this incident happened. It was very slow for me. And overall, I didn't really enjoy the writing or feel like we got to know our main character at all. It kind of just felt like he was just there. If it wasn't a novella, I for sure would have DNF'd this book. The guests are concerned that survivors, uh, other survivors are kind of starting to show up and they're trying to get hit help and they're not sure if that's going to be safe for them. Um, and they don't really want to allow other people in and possibly be contaminated. Yeah, this book just really didn't do anything interesting for me, honestly. Like, I would have DNF'd it if it was any longer than it was. The premise was very interesting, but overall, I just really did not enjoy the execution on this one. Then lastly, we have Midnight on Beacon Street, and this is written by Ruth, Emily Ruth Verona. This I listened to on audiobook, another um, mystery... 2024 release. <laughs> this book, I'm not even exactly sure what category to put it in. It reads like young adults, but I'm pretty sure it's marketed as an adult book. The genre I would put this in is thriller, but 60% into the book and I felt like nothing remotely thrilling had happened so far. <laughs> At about that point, some action does begin to happen, but it is very anticlimactic. I will say the ending was a little bit of a surprise, but it happens so quickly and so late that it just really falls flat and it feels like the book kind of just drops off. I would not recommend this book to anybody. I don't just read something else. It follows the perspective of a teenage babysitter in October 1993 who is watching two kids and we get one of the kids perspective and our main character Amy's perspective. There are some flashbacks but they're so in in like uncohesive and unnecessary. Literally the first 60% of the book nothing happens. It's all just set up. At that point I figured I wasn't going to like the book but I just finished it to kind of just see where the author was going to take the ending. I can see how it's supposed to be a play on your classic 
horror movie tropes, but it just was not well done. I can see what the author was trying to do with the writing and the vibes, but the last part I just found it so ridiculous. This is a debut and it definitely feels like it. Would I pick up another book by this author in the future? Maybe, but I would be very hesitant to. Um, it was very short though, so it was manageable to finish it. So that's like kind of the only positive thing I could say about it. So those were a lot of books that I read in February. Now we're going to flip over to March, which was very different. I only finished three books in the month of March. So this next part is going to be <laughs> very quick. Um, I finished three books. No DNFs, but fortunately, even though I only finished three books, I gave all of them a four star rating. So at least I was picking up and finishing things that I enjoyed. So the first book we have is Barchester Towers by Anthony Trollope. This book was published back in 1857. So this would definitely fall into like your classics genre. I read this book as a combination of a physical book that I own and I also would kind of listen to it a bit on audiobook as well. This is the second book in the Chronicles of Barshit Sire series which takes place in this fictional town and a lot of the characters from the first book are featured prominently in this one. I would say the majority of them were from the first book but there were a lot of new characters that were introduced as well. And although the writing can be a little bit dry, I do appreciate like the comedic element of Trollope's writing. I really love the characters. The pacing was definitely on the slower side. It's not a quick read, but still enjoyable to me. It kind of forces me to slow down a little bit more as I'm reading it to enjoy it more. The basic premise of the book is it starts off with the death of the bishop and the following because of that there's like a vacancy um and that's where the story springs off and it kind of touches on a lot of different like inter workings of like religious politics kind of similar to the warden um with the clergy and like all the different positions and the um just different dynamics of that. I don't want to reveal any spoilers as it is the second book in the series but I will definitely be continuing on with the next one in the series Dr. Thorne. There, the new characters though that were introduced into this book they just were so refreshing and I love their the, his choices in including them. They were very memorable and interesting and irritable characters but I still enjoyed reading them. And I have to correct myself because I lied to you guys. I did give one book a three star rating in March and that was First Lie Wins by Ashley Elston. This was a mystery thriller that was released this year. I listened to it on audiobook. This book is kind of like a take on Mr. and Mrs. Smith if you guys are familiar with that movie with Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. Um, it does have a lot of similarities with it. We're following our main character, her name's Evie Porter, and she has everything you would think you would want from a really nice house, good friends, loving boyfriend, but the thing is that the catch is that Evie Porter doesn't exist. The identity comes first. So she's working for this mysterious boss and his, her boss's name is Mr. Smith. And everything that she knows, she knows through him. And so her mark is her boyfriend, Ryan. She doesn't really know, like she's not given much information. She knows she's on a job, but she doesn't have much information other than that. Apparently because of a previous assignment she had, she's on very thin ice. So she has to make sure that this assignment goes well. This book was very like high stakes. It was action, it was like intrigue and stuff like that. I feel like I'm not really drawn to that as a book genre. So that's why I gave it a three star rating. But I feel like if you really are into those types of books, then you will enjoy this book. I know it has like pretty good ratings on Goodreads, so I can like really recommend it if you feel like that kind of premise is something you're into. I feel like for me, when it comes with anything like like how I just described, I'm typically someone who would prefer to watch that as a movie than to read it as a book. I'm not super into like heavy high action books like that, but I did enjoy it. It was interesting enough to like keep me going. I finished the book and see where it went in the end. Um, yeah, so I would definitely, even though like I gave it three star rating, which is good, not bad, uh, I could definitely recommend this to other people and I would see a lot of people enjoying this and I feel, I have a feeling this may end up like on one of Goodreads choice picks for the mystery thriller category at the end of the year. Then last but not least, we have The Illumination of Ursula Flight by Anna Marie Crowhurst. This book I gave four star rating to and it falls in the historical fiction genre. And this book came back out back in 2018. I was able to read a physical copy that I owned on my shelves and you probably have noticed a very similar theme to this uh, <laughs> book catch up that 
the majority of the books that I did read over the past two months were audiobooks, but this was one of the few that I did read fully, completely as a physical book, mainly because there was no audiobook available from my library. This book was a very interesting period drama. I would love to see an adaptation of this happen. I probably doubt it would happen, but I feel like it could come across well on screen. We were following our main character, Ursula, and she is growing up kind of like in this more wealthy to do family. She kind of struggles with going towards conventionally what she's supposed to do, what her family wants her to do, marrying who they want her to do, living and ha a life like they want her to have and to live up to them because he, her dad is like a lord of the manor. And also she's tired, she's kind of like conflicted because there's a lot of things that she wants for herself. Like she likes writing, she loves acting, she loves specifically she likes writing plays. We follow her for a good chunk of her life for a lot of ups and downs and mistakes she makes and trying to live up to everyone's expectations and then finally like striking out and making a life for herself. So overall I really enjoyed this book. I will definitely look into other books that this author has written. As we do see Ursula from a very young age through like very critical years in her life we get to really grow up with her, see how she becomes who she is. Um, it was really interesting in that some parts of the book are written kind of like in multimedia format in like a script style. So I really found that refreshing and different. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Those were all the books that I read over the past couple of months. It's nice to finally be caught up and I look forward to being able to tell you guys what I've read in the month of April. Once the month is finished, I have read a good amount of books so far for the month. I think I'm at about six. So um, it's overall shaping up to be a good reading month so far. No more five star reads, but that's my main thing. I would just love to find more books that I really, really love enough to give five stars to. So I'm going to hope that that happens <laughs> at some point this year. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching this video. I know it's a very long wrap up. Uh, let me know if you guys have read any books that you've loved so far this year, if you've given anything five stars. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!